Hello, welcome to my podcast today. In rural relationships today, I want to talk about the balance of power. There are two kinds of power. We have our own personal power, and that's uh, coming from inside us and out, and then the power that we like to exert over our life, other people, it's our control, how we try and control things that are past our own reality, past ourselves, and they're, they're the two different sorts of powers. To have personal power is very good. You need to have your own personal power that, so that you will stand up for what you believe in and you have a sense of who you are and your identity and you're not frightened to have a voice, If particularly if you're in a safe space. It's different if you're not in a safe space. Personal power means being quiet then. However, there's also the other power, which is the power that we have, that we try and exert over other people to get an outcome that we think is a better outcome. Sometimes that sort of power can be good, like we have good intention. Other times that sort of power is just self-serving and selfish. So there's kind of two within that one. To have a good balance of power in your love relationship means that you both have a good set of personal power, that that person feels, your partner feels that they can say what they feel and think and they're not going to be told off or made feel bad about it, that they can be who they are, if that's their personal power, and that you too can be who you are and be different to them and have different views and it's okay that you retain your personal power. So if you have different political views or different views on eating or lifestyle, that you can still be together because you allow and respect the other person's point of view and you let them have their own power. So there's a kind of a balance in personal power where you both have it. However, if one of them has personal power and everything they do is fine and they you let them do it and you're happy for them to have that, but that you are not afforded that back. For example, they can eat whatever they like and run their life how they want to, do their money how they want to. But then you're not given that. They want to tell you what you should or shouldn't be eating or how you should be doing your money or how you should be running your life. Then you don't have an equal balance. An equal balance means it's the same. And you want to set that up in your personal power life. That means that if you want to be a vegan and they want to be a meat eater, there's going to be no problems with that because the vegan will eat the vegan food and the carnival will eat the meat food and it's all taken care of. The one is not trying to overpower, guilt trip, make the other person feel like they should be doing it their way. That's overriding your personal power into someone else's life. This balance of power is really important too, particularly in part two. And part two is when you are trying to maintain or get power over your partner you want them to do what you want them to do and usually with this power there's a punishment that comes with it so if you don't do what they want people will punish you they will punish you outwardly you'll be told off or ostracized or they will do it quietly and you'll be shut down and shut out and if they love you conditionally of course they'll punish you with withdrawing the love then there's not an equal balance of power because you can't have power without punishment and that's really important to have a look at. Can you have power in your relationship and disagree with your partner and not be punished? And if the answer is yes to that, then in a sense you have equal power, you have a balance of power in the relationship. Or if you are different to your partner and won't do what they want and don't abide by their rules, are you punished or well, then you don't have equal power? And this is when it starts to all go wrong because people will vie for power. It's a normal human thing to do because on some level most people think that how they're doing it is the better way for you or the best way and they are invested in getting you to do it their way because they think you will have a better outcome or they will have a better outcome. An equal balance means in personal power you can be yourself and the person accepts you and doesn't punish you. And in this second power, which is the power that we exert over each other, you are not punished if you don't do what they want you to do. That's the difference. They might not be crazy and happy about it, but they accept it and you have a balance of power. This can come into areas like, for example, 
you don't want to go to the family show and they want you to go but you don't really like the people who are going to be there now in the imbalance not working power you will be forced coerced guilt tripped into going and then if you don't go you will be blamed and again guilt tripped that is not equal balance of power if your partner is not comfortable going you should be able to say to them no that's fine i totally understand i'll go and i'll tell them you couldn't come and that's fine and there will be no retribution there'll be no punishment what happens in normal relationships though is that people start to vie for power and the one person wants to be the boss and then the other person wants to be the boss and then they play this who's going to be the boss and once you get into these power plays you're never coming from love love and power don't kind of go together love is a power it's a powerful emotion to have and a place to be working from but that's different to the power and control because there's always control in that kind of power I'm talking about and you might want to look at this in your relationship who is the boss in your relationship if you can't answer that because neither of you are the boss you probably have a fairly good balance but if you know definitely who is the boss in the relationship then you're going to have an imbalance in your relationship then you have the situation where you're both trying to be the boss and there'll be a lot of fighting, a lot of disagreements, a lot of discord in your relationship because while you're fighting to be the boss, then that's going to be not coming from love and you're going to be really invested in winning the battle, like always winning because when you get into power relationships, when they become a power relationship, it's all about winning and the one person submitting to you and you getting your own way. I've seen the naggers are very uh, much implicated in the imbalance of power because when they're nagging you, they're trying to get the power back. That's what they're really trying to do. And of course, you're resisting passively or not so passively. The people who have the best relationships come from love and empower each other. They don't try and disempower. And that's the very bad aspect of an imbalance of power that the other person will try and disempower you. So they will find your weak spot. It might be something you're self-conscious about, they'll pick on. Maybe it's a physical thing, something that you're not very good at, and they will ride you on that to disempower you, to make you feel bad about yourself. People can be very manipulative, and also people can be very cruel. Even people who love you can be cruel to you. And I want you to realize that that cruelty doesn't just come from someone who doesn't love you. Cruelty comes from someone who does love you, and that's the worst cruelty of all of them, I think, because it has the most impact upon you. Try and get an equal balance of power in your relationship so that if people don't want to do what the other person wants to do or they're really uncomfortable with it, they're not forced or coerced or made to do it. And if they stand up, to the person and don't want to do it, they're not punished or ridiculed. Sometimes we can't do certain things that the other person can do. If there's been a lot of damage in our past, particularly if we've come out of abuse, we're going to have these areas where the fear will just come up and the anxiety and that overrides everything. And if your partner comes from love, they will understand that and they will help you through it. If they come from power and control, they won't try to even go there with how you feel. It'll all be do is what you're told and they're going to make your life a misery. Abuse is an imbalance of power. So if you're with an abusive person or a person who can be abusive or if you are abusive, when you are doing that, you are upsetting the power balance in your relationship because abuse is about power and control and there's no love in it. It's about just getting the other person to do as you're told and also to disempower them so that you are now the boss. So try and wipe out any abuse. If you've got trouble and you're living with an abusive partner or your abuse is in you, it's important that you try to get some counselling, professional help to stop doing it. Because being abusive is just a behaviour. You choose to do it. You don't have to. The person doesn't want to do something. You're being nice about it and kind. The person doesn't want to do something. You scream and yell and hit them. That's the two behaviours you choose. And you just can choose what to do. Abuse is still a choice. Whether you abuse person or don't abuse person is always a choice. 
and you can get your partner to choose not to do that even if they've had a bad background in my opinion I came out of abuse you should come out of that place never doing that to anyone because you know how it feels and you should never come out of that and think that the abuse gave you a reason or an excuse to abuse another person that's really bad don't tolerate abuse in your relationship and if there is try and see to get rid of it because that's an power imbalance what you want to have is a balance of power no one is the boss having said that sometimes one person will get their own way because it's more important for them it's really important for this person they really love the house they want the house you like the house it's okay but you're not crazy about it but they are just so crazy besotted in love with the house you buy the house for them because you know you just let them have their own way but it's not done in a disempowering way it's actually done in a way that you give the person love so you let them sometimes do things the way they want to do it and maybe appear that they're getting their own way because in a sense they are but you're coming from love when you do that and then it's a good thing it's a good balance of power some people have to do this in relationships for example if your partner has to go back and study and, and not earn any money for a while and you have to be the main breadwinner well so be it you do that they're not being the boss and getting their own way you're allowing them to have it this way because it's going to make them happy and it's a good thing try and get the balance of power to work in your relationship because if you have equal personal power and equal relationship power and you can be flexible within that and come from love you won't have as many fights or arguments and you'll basically be loving each other you'll be loving each other and coming from a loving space it's not important to have power and control power and control doesn't really make you feel good it's just like being a little puffed up pigeon for like three seconds what makes you feel good is being loved and nourished and to love other people and make their life happy that's where the nourishment comes from so have a look at your relationship talk to your partner see if you can get it more balanced if it's not in balance and address some of the things that we talked about today I'm sending you lots of love and lots of healing.